All right, my friends, this is my uh, video three in the LPIC series, very short series, and what I'm trying to do, give you guys a very short overview of things that you need to know. In the first video, I went over some commands that you need to know to understand the system itself, okay? I went over the sys system, proc system. Uh, the difference, <coughs> the sys, uh, it's a memory, uh, it's a file system that's stored in the memory, okay? Both proc and sys, they're stored in the memory. Uh, the sys system, you use that to uh, allow, it It can modify the system um, connected, uh, connected devices, okay? And proc file system, it gives you lots of information about lots of different things, like proc meminfo, proc cpu, and you can do a list on them to get more information, okay? The div, uh, it tells you the, uh, the devices connected to your machine. Mod probe is something, it's a command that you use to load and add and remove modules from the Linux kernel. <coughs> LS module tells you the loaded module at the, at, at, at the time when you're running. And LS PCI list all the PCI devices. Now this is just a, a recap. Please go ahead and watch the video that I already have uh, where I displayed some of the commands and how to run it. Now let's talk about the next video, next topic that is about the booting a Linux system. Now when I was preparing for the exam, this booting a Linux system was one of the most confusing part <clears throat> that I, I thought it was very hard for me to understand and grasp. So I think what you really need to know that uh, there are three different type of a uh, booting process in Linux that's going to be important for you to understand and remember for the exam. The first one is the sysv. Now see that sysv is old. So it's a process that when uh, it's old, a lo older version of the Linux, you will see that this process is still being used. And this process after that came a new process called upstart and but that process probably never got too much popularity and uh, today pretty much any system i have seen so far they all use systemd okay that's currently new so that's the first thing you need to need to remember that sysv system is old and then followed by upstart system and then systemd like if you go to red hat or uh, even kali linux that i'm using and uh, uh, say Debian Ubuntu, they all use the system D. Okay. Now for the booting process, this is what you need to remember. So everything starts with a bias. Okay. Bias, <coughs> it does a post and then it goes to the MBR. Okay. Uh, and then master boot record and it gets the bootloader. Okay. So bias once it makes sure the computer is working fine, there is no problem. It gets the bootloader from the some from the master boot boot record, mm -hmm. and then it 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 calls the grab or grab two. And these days grab two is the is the newer version of it. So most time when you see a uh, uh, you'll see the grab two is is opening or you'll see some. Uh, takes display when uh, a new system is is restarting or starting you'll see a lot of grab messages before you see the command interface of the of the G, of, of the command command line or the GUI okay now this grab it loads modules and the modules are loaded usually from a file called intra intramfs <clears throat> okay now then what happens, so first bias, bias gets the bootloader, bootloader gets the kernel. Now bootloader now is now started talking to the kernel and the kernel is loaded from the H, H, from the hard, hard disk, okay? And when the kernel is loaded, kernel now can start the system. It does the system initialization. Now again, what are, based on what kind of system you have, there are different files that uh, gets executed uh, at this time. So please remember this process and that process is same for everything. It's bias, 
to bootloader to kernel and to and then to system initialization now also remember you can pass various parameters when the bootloader or the grab is loading and uh, you can probably should do some some extra study on what kind of parameters and options you can pass and you will see there's a <coughs> kernel line where you can directly pass various parameters when it's actually booting <coughs> and uh, like uh, you can you can run the list etc default grab command just to see you know if you have a graph file how would it look like so let's see if we have a graph file or not so let's clear out this text and just write my text default grab so this is <coughs> my grab file it's a Kali box okay and here uh, they have different settings and you will probably learn a lot more about you know these settings and what else you can you can align in here but for now for the exam just remember that your grab settings are under etc default and grab in that file now this is another thing I think uh, I should let you guys know a lot of times if you have a system and you have to figure out is it a system D system or is it an upstart system or is it uh, the newer uh, system D based system got three how, how do you how do you tell now if you have a system D system and if you go to user library folder there there is usually a, a folder called system D and that tells you that you're probably on a system D based system similarly if you have upstart you go to user share upstart and you will find a file a folder for the upstart and sysv systems they're uh, based on the itc init d and this folder typically tells you that it's a, a sysv uh, system uh, but uh, you a lot of time you will see even though the system d is using a newer newer system to start they will also have this file for example let me show you and the other way to know what kind of system you have is just to run the sudo stat proc 1e because the one is the f is the first process and you will be able to figure out what is actually initiali initializing the first process in your system if it's init file then you will see the init file is associated with one so let's run some commands here again <coughs> all right so we're gonna start doing this command I'm already root so I don't need the uh, sudo here so if I do that you see the if I run this it, it points to user lib system D then system D so it's telling me my system is a system D system and again if that's true based on our theory here there should be a folder like this so let's do a uh, ls lh on it see so make sure that it's uh, there and right there it is so you see there you know under you have boot catalog login d and all kinds of information in here <coughs> that uh, you know this system d uses now let's see if i have anything like that and based on this theory there shouldn't be any right so if i do ls and uh, do this oh my god it's still there a lot of the same stuff is still here so that's why I'm saying that this is probably not uh, a hundred percent accurate statement that if you have this folder that is always the old system these two I agree and I can show you prove you that I don't have any folder like that and again this is the color Linux box so ls lh <coughs> and there's nothing okay no such file or directory <coughs> alright let's see so again uh, sysv as I said it's an old system and it's based on the run labels and for the exam make sure that you remember the path to configure the sysv is present in the init tab that's the first file that's being called when kernel calls the system initialization process that is the file it determines what's going to happen <coughs> Now for the on for the upstart the same thing is kind of defined under its init rc sys init dot con file okay that's again another important uh, file path to remember uh, the newer one 
uh, as I said, it's uh, under user leave system D system, and that's where uh, it's based on targets, and a lot of targets they're they're defined in here, and uh, there could be a system target, basic target, multi-user target, and graphical target. Like I'm running this box, uh, I have a graphical user phase available to me, so I'm pretty sure. So if I try to see what is the default target for me. The default tar target is most likely pointing to the graphical target, right? So let's see what kind of uh, output do I get here. <coughs> All right, so that's uh, I did the LS on uh, lots of stuff in here. So let's go up a little bit more. Now LS on system this system, and in here what I'm looking for is default the target and all of this. Okay, you know what? <coughs> do same command uh, star target okay let's see what we get all right so those are all the targets no 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 system dot uh, dot target let's see <coughs> Okay, you, you can see that they also have run levels and targets and everything defined. Um, so lots of things. Uh, let's let's do this maybe. Just to, let's just see what we have uh, under the less graphical targets. So if you have a graphical target defined in here, I'm pretty sure you do. Uh, let's see if you have anything like that. Okay, so this is how what is defined on the graphical target, and. Uh, you don't really need to know what what you know how to configure this this is uh, pretty much it's defining that yeah you can have a GUI and that's pretty much all you need to know uh, the other thing you probably should know is the default target is a is a link so if you look at that it starts with L that means this default target for my system is a link and it's pointing to the graphical target so when I start my system it will open in an environment where the graphical target is that is defined by the by the by the graphical target. Okay, so remember these commands uh, and uh, and the three different types of systems initialization that's possible. A uh, <coughs> couple other things um, in this boot process. If you want to look at the boot log or system log. Uh, you can try this command some machine it will say that it's a binary file so most of the time you won't be able to see much from a binary file for in this case I'm still gonna say just okay and yes and let's open the file so this file at least in Kali Linux is still short of readable but there's a better place where you can find uh, your, your messages okay yeah let's see let's quit out of it and uh, for the kernel ring buffer okay you can go you can directly just type d message so d m e s g and you just hit enter it just tells you a now nice visual color coded version whatever everything happened uh, to the kernel you get all of this information and another thing uh, for the messages uh, related to boot and everything else and that's the folder that's very very important that you should remember that most files and most logs in the unix system they will be stored under var log folder so if you do a ls uh, lh on it uh, you will see all kinds of logs okay and uh, apache 2 if you have apache running auth log boot log bootstrap daemon log debug log okay dkpg log for any package installation fail log uh, kernel log last log messages okay let's try messages here just just for for the sake of some fun uh, ls uh, messages like let's see i'll do a ls less on it not ls sorry here okay so that's also give you gives you a lot of uh, logs messages is probably oh, the main log that collects everything it's uh, it's just a master log and pretty much everything that uh, happens in the system 
most of it's probably going to the messages. If I can find anything where it's going, I'll probably come to this particular file to find my information. All right, so this is kind of the overview of what you need to know about the uh, uh, the boot process. Again, a bias goes to bootloader to kernel to system initialization. Bias does the initial post, then gets the bootloader from the master boot record. It could be a grub. It loads all the modules and then kernel is loaded and kernel calls the CSV or upstart or systemd to present you the machine that you're gonna work. All right, so let's think about some questions. So if questions, it's this chapter since they have so many commands and things happening, so they can easily ask you what is the older version of system initialization. You should be able to identify CSV or if they tell you okay I have a CSV what is the file that you should be editing or reviewing so you should be able to tell is the init file um, and uh, where is it available <coughs> it is a init tab there's a file that you need to edit um, then um, say where do you find the find the syslog so you, you should be able to tell all the syslog should be available under var log and syslog uh, the kernel ring buffer you should be able to tell is a DMESG uh, command that you can run uh, they can ask what is the bias basic input output system when does it happen so it's happened during the very initial phase of the booting process uh, bias does the post and it loads the what the bootloader it gets a bootloader from the MBR uh, you can ask about the bootloader. What is a bootloader? It's a program that loads an operating system. And kernel is the core between the hardware and the application. So that's the core of your machine. Uh, it's in it tab. I talked about it. It's the configuration file that controls what happens on a restart or when the run levels are forced changed. Uh, upstart, program that spawns other processes. <coughs> it's in it the I also talked about this. This is what the traditional CISV in its scripts and upstart backward compatible scripts reside. And this is a command. Uh, we'll probably talk about it more later. It's a tail in it uh, you can use to change the system run levels. Okay. Um, so. <coughs> mm. Just for fun, I'm just trying to see till in it, uh, man, man, till in it. Okay, till in it, uh, help, no while. Uh, till in it zero is gonna shut down the machine, till in it six is gonna reboot the machine, uh, and that kind of stuff. Okay, there are other commands that you can use, but again, this is one useful command. If you wanna be like a, a geek and you wanna shut down the machine, you can go there and just run till in it six in the in your command prompt and it's just going to restart your machine how cool is that all right so that's the third video of it and in the in the next video we'll do some more um, more commands and and we'll see you in the next one hope you like the video please subscribe and uh, comment if you like the video thank you